There is a common thread of two things that are linked together. One of them is passive aggressiveness, and the other is weakness. So why do we act in ways that are passive aggressive? Why do we say things that are passive aggressive? Why is passive aggressiveness a thing? Well, it's probably because we don't feel strong enough to speak our truth. We don't feel strong enough to assert ourselves in our life. And so when we don't feel strong enough, when we don't feel like we have the power to do that, we act from a place of just following the rules, going along with what we don't agree with, even though we don't agree with it. We still go along with it. And so when it comes to conflict, one of the more negative cards to play is just choosing to say something where there's an underhand motive of trying to respond and trying to fight back and stand up for yourself under fire. It comes from a place of, I can't win, and this person's bigger than me, and this person has more power than me. It is a tactic that we use to please the other person. And when we choose passive aggression, passive, passive I can't speak today, passive aggression, we are devaluing ourselves and we're not being true to ourselves. And we choose to not be true to ourselves and be in these situations because we don't feel like other people value what we have to say and really appreciate the full worth of what we have to say. We don't feel that people are going to support us and be on our side and lift us up and understand us and work with us to make those changes and for us to take action on whatever we need and want in our life. We just do not feel like people have our back and we are really living from the outside in when we choose passive aggression. We are allowing the external focus and how we feel about the people externally to win. And we project that onto ourselves when we choose passive aggressiveness or passive aggression is you know, when we do this, we let the outside influence what we do and who we are, or we question our truth and question our mind and what we have to say and what's really right for us when we choose passive aggression. It's not really coming from a place of personal empowerment and personal self-confidence in yourself and truth and you giving yourself permission to live out that truth and speak that truth. And so there's a couple of you know examples. Let's just say that I'm watching a video and then you know my grandma's trying to hear a um the weather or something, and I can't hear my video or just you know, any kind of show. Let's let's just make it the news. 
So I'm trying to watch a video on the house computer in the living room. And she is watching whatever she's watching. And she has the volume up really, really high. And so I say to her, can you turn that down? Can you just turn that down? I'm trying to hear what I'm hearing. And her response to that is something that can rub people the wrong way. And it's one of my pet peeves. I do not think it is respectful and right and ethical to choose passive aggression, actually. It's very interesting because in astrology, my sun and moon are in the opposite sign. My sun in Aries is the self-assertion. It's the independent one. It is the one that wants to push somebody just so that they can stand up for themselves. It's a very physical, masculine energy that is great at motivating people to stand up for themselves and do and say what they want. And when we add labor to the mix, it, it, it really is about relating and how to relate. And labor is so great at tuning into the other person and make, considering the other's perspective and choosing compromise from a place of personal empowerment, from a place of truth. That compromise and that relating has to come from a place of the person being his or her authentic self not victim, not martyrdom, not I'm letting you win. I mean, for labor energy to be working, both people have to come in with an open mind. Um, they need to come in with the intentions of peacemaking and being open to what the other is saying because if one person is not open and is stubborn and then the other is trying to make peace with him or her what's that about i mean are you really going to tell somebody who grew up in a home with a bunch of various energy at play with people being impulsive and a lot of fighting and drama to make peace with the fighting and the drama? Am I going to make peace with the passive aggressive comment of, okay, you can have your way. I'm not going to make peace with that because I don't believe in that. That was the response that I got. That was the, um, I actually want to call it a remark that I got. true story. I was sitting in the living room watching a video and my grandma was watching some show and the remark was, okay, you can have your way. It, it, it was said in a highly passive aggressive manner. And it's those little comments in general that are not healthy. Not only are they not healthy, but they come from a place of weakness and they come from a place of personal, you know, not feeling like you're strong enough and not feeling like you have the space to assert yourself. And you're just making those kind of comments. You're, you know, and what it is, is when people choose passive aggression, they are really being aggressive in a non-assertive way. They're digging in to somebody and try and and they're trying to fuel a fire from a place of low self-confidence and low self-empowerment. They're trying to fuel the fire. Well stop fueling the fire and just choose to speak your truth. Just choose to be assertive. And don't for one moment Give the other people a taste of their own poison. You know, don't just say, well, as you said, I'm going to speak my truth and this is how it is. 
you know, that really, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that someone's, you know, what someone, you know, encourages as somebody else should be, you know, that shouldn't be used against the people who were encouraging the people who gave them a taste of their own poison, that that shouldn't be, you know, what they have to say should not be put against them. Um, but um, we just don't feel like we can say things and have people understand and we feel like we can't get people to get us and we can't get what we want. And so we just choose to go along with everyone. And of course we have to say things. We can't just bite our tongue. So we have to say something. We have to do something. Because there's a fire in all of us and there's that energy of an inhale, not an exhale. Like, feel better now that I spoke the truth. I feel that I've cleared that out of my system. Now I feel like this issue is addressed. Now I feel like this is taken care of. Now I feel free and more abundant and more calm and more at peace because I was true to myself and because this issue got sorted out in this way, because I chose to be authentically me. When we try to suppress that energy and hold in that energy inside of us, which is our authenticity, and when we deny those parts of ourselves just to not cause disharmony and not rock the boat and not, you know, do whatever, then we stab ourselves in the foot. We stab ourselves in the foot. We stab ourselves in the backside. Don't hold your tongue. You know, drop into your heart is 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 just what I'm gonna put out there and you know, take it or leave it. You know, you can do with with what this inf you can do anything with this information that you want to. But what I would suggest is to drop into your heart and drop into your truth. Step back, close your eyes. Open them, take a breath, and choose to be true to yourself. And let go of the projections and the opinions and the worry of what other people are going to think of you. Because what people think of you is none of your business. And people are going to talk. People are going to do that. People at times, will be judgmental of your truth. But when you have the freedom and the detachment to realize that that is what they are saying and that is their projections that they are telling you, that they are projecting onto you, and when you step back and spoke from your truth, they can say whatever they want to say. You were true to yourself. You asserted yourself. And maybe if they're not going to help you find somebody else to do it yourself. I mean, that's the next thing, the next sort of unit bridge. But at least you did not shoot yourself in the foot by being passive aggressive. Hard lessons to learn in terms of maturity. I say maturity is learning to step into your authenticity. Maturity is releasing the habit patterns of people pleasing and unhealthy relationship dynamics. Maturity is being able to come from a place of truth and wisdom and act on your anger and to not choose to be violent at the same time. That's, you know, really what, you know, maturity comes down to a lot of the time. It isn't just learning to go by the book because when I try to assert myself, I can't get what I want. And I have grown and I have matured 
and I've been conditioned and I've been indoctrinated into thinking that, well, it's no use wanting something. It's no use needing anything or expecting anyone to do anything. It's no use achieving anything, speaking my truth, because life kills every dream that I have. It's no use. And by goodness, I sure wish it could be different, but I learned early on that, it, like, when people project their own perceptions, which go along those kind of lines of when they put their, speaking from a place of truth and authenticity, and asserting themselves and what they need and want, doing all those things as being immature, quote unquote, that makes me angry. And that's not acceptable. I mean, you're not going to have a conversation with me and just expect it to be fun. Now, I will understand and I will have the compassion. But you won't walk away if you're having a conversation with me with that belief. I just, I do not buy people who speak like that and people who allow themselves to hold that belief. People who succumb and are choose to be a victim to that kind of belief. Because it's so binary. Selfish is when we choose to do things for ourselves that are violent toward others, that hurt other people. There's a difference between self-love and self-care and valuing yourself and being selfish. Projecting your anger in a negative and unhealthy way onto others. Well, I mean... I mean, it, it's, it's all a balance. But to balance the energies of areas which is super independent and super fired up and asserting yourself in labor, which is all about a relationship, the balance is not going to fall in and result in being people-pleasing and, you know, all those kind of things like that. So I would not say, and I wouldn't, I really wouldn't recommend that people go along with passive aggressiveness that they have the confidence and belief and they the the, the self-knowledge the knowing themselves and initiating and asserting what they would like changed what they want to have happened in their life without the fear or anxiety of what are they going to think of me of you know the, um, the, um, just the overall disempowerment. Um, yeah. So I just really wanted to make this message loud and clear. I hope that you, um, found this contemplation interesting. I'll see you on another video.